This video is on simplifying square roots part one. It will take several videos to get through this concept. The idea of the square root is just that it's the opposite of squaring. So the square root of 16 is 4 because 4 squared gives us 16. Square root of 36 is 6 because 6 squared gives us 36. Square root of 49 is 7 because 7 squared is 49. You can take the square root of a fraction. Just look at the top, look at the bottom. The square root of 4 is 2 and the square root of 9 is 3. You can take the square root of a decimal. Square root of 0.25, since there are two decimal places in this number here, that means I need one decimal place in the number that I squared. Now, all of those are perfect squares. They came out even. They're numbers that you're probably familiar with, and you didn't have to do a whole lot of thinking. But sometimes the square root does not come out even. And before we look at that, we need to establish a couple definitions. First off, a prime number is a number that has exactly two factors. 2 is the first prime number. It's the only even prime number. This is the beginning of the list of the prime numbers. 1 is not considered prime because it has only one factor. Prime has two factors. The prime factorization of a number, any composite number, which is a non-prime number, can be written as a product of prime numbers. And a factor tree is a method to find the prime factorization of a number. And you're thinking, what's all this prime stuff have to do with square roots? Well, we're going to use a factor tree to establish the prime factorization, and that's going to help us simplify square roots that aren't even. Square root of 12. There is no whole number squared that gives me 12, so I have to use this factor tree. I need to come up with two factors that multiply to give me 12. I could use 2 times 6, I could use 3 times 4, it doesn't matter. I chose 3 times 4. 3 is prime, so I circle it. That tells me I'm done with this branch of the tree. 4 is not prime, so I'm going to keep factoring it into 2 times 2. All of those branches are terminal branches because I have prime numbers. It's all circled up. So that means 12 is the same as 2 times 2 times 3. Because 12 is the same as 2 times 2 times 3, that means the square root of 12 is the same as the square root of 2 times 2 times 3. And what we do is we look for pairs. For each pair of identical factors, one factor comes outside of the radical sign. And whatever's left over, whatever is not paired up, stays inside the radical. So for this pair of 2's, a 2 will come outside the radical. And the 3 will stay inside the radical. The reason this works is if you just look at the 2 times the 2, just look at this, 2 times 2 is 4. What's the square root of 4? It's 2. So that's why we say for each pair of identical factors, one of those factors comes outside and then anything left over stays inside the radical. So it's pairs on the outside, leftovers on the inside. Look at another one. Square root of 40. You could think of it as 4 times 10 or 8 times 5. I just did 4 times 10. Neither of those is prime, so I have to keep on factoring. 4 will break into 2 times 2, and 10 breaks into 2 times 5. Each of those numbers is circled because they are all prime. That means 40 is the same as 2 times 2 times 2 times 5, which means the square root of 40 equals the square root of 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. So here's a pair of 2's. For that pair, 1 is going to come outside, and the 2 times the 5 that's left over stays inside, and we do multiply that up to get the simplified answer of 2 times the square root of 10. Notice the pairs came outside, the leftovers inside. Sometimes students get those confused. Pairs outside, think about pairs grow outside on trees, leftovers like inside the refrigerator. So pairs outside, leftovers inside. Square root of 72. Pick what you want. I did 8 times 9. Keep factoring those. 9 goes to 3 times 3, which both of those numbers are prime, so they're circled. 8 breaks into 4 times 2. 2 is prime, but 4 is not, so we need to go one more step. There's our prime factorization. 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. Written out. We have two different pairs. We have a pair of 2's. We have a pair of 3's. Both of those pairs are going to come outside. So we have a 2 coming out because of that pair of 2's. We have a 3 coming out because of that pair of 3's. But we have this leftover 2. And the 2 times the 3 on the outside gives us 6 times the square root of 2. 
Now let's pretend you don't recognize that the square root of 144 is a perfect square. And let's just go at this like a normal problem to show you what will happen if something really is a perfect square and you don't recognize it. So 144 breaks into 12 times 12. Then I broke them to 2 times 6. 2's are prime, so they're circled. The 6's each break into 2 times 3. So writing up all of those 2's and 3's gives me that the square root of 144 is 4 2's, 2 3's. One little suggestion when you have a big tree, as you group these up, you might slash them out. We have 1, 2, 3, 4 2's. Yep, I've got 4 2's and I've got 2 3's. Another thing you could do once you write the prime factorization is multiply this up to be sure it really gives you 144. A common mistake is for students to leave some factor hanging on the tree. Multiply all these up and we do get 144. Now we've got a pair of 2's, we've got another pair of 2's, and we've got a pair of 3's. So for each of those pairs, things are going to come out. For a pair of 2's, that 2's coming out. For that pair of 2's, that one's coming out. And for the pair of 3's, that one's coming out. So what I have is a bunch of pairs. 2 times 2 times 3 is 12. There are no unpaired numbers. That means there's no reason for me to write a square root sign because there's no leftovers. And we know that square root of 144 is 12, and that just verifies it. So if you have a number that truly is a perfect square and you don't recognize it from the beginning, that's okay. As long as you write out all the factors, you should be able to get the right answer. Now there is a faster way to simplify these square roots if you know your factors. If you're pretty good with your basic times tables, then this is another option and it is a faster option. What you want to do is look at the number and find the largest perfect square that's a factor of this number. Then you're going to take the square root of that number and that becomes the coefficient, meaning the number on the outside. The non-perfect square factor stays on the inside. Now, the only way this works is if you know your factors. If you look at 50 and think, hmm, 5 times 10 and that's all you can think about, this method isn't good for you. But if you think about 50 breaking into 25 times 2 and we look at 25 being a perfect square, then we can continue. Now, there is a property that says the square root of a product is the same as the product of the individual square roots. So I took my 25, I took my 2, they're both still under the square root sign. But square root of 25, I recognize as a perfect square, so a 5 comes out and there's your square root of 2 left inside. This is the same thing as if we had done the factor tree. 50 breaks into 5 times 5 times 2. There's your pair of 5s. That's the 5 coming out, and there's your 2 left inside. It's just this method right here is faster if you know your factors. You have to be careful. Square root of 80. Okay, what comes to mind right off the top of my head is, oh, 4 times 20. 4 is a perfect square. That looks good. But 4 is not the greatest factor, the greatest perfect square factor that goes into 80. 16 is. So I don't want this 4 times 20. I want the 16 times 5. If you stayed with the 4 times 20, you're going to have an answer that's not completely simplified. I look at the 16 times 5. I know I have the biggest because there's no other factors of 5, so this is good. Square root of 16 times the square root of 5. I can do the square root of 16 is 4, and then times the square root of 5. So the last couple of screens there just showed you the faster way to do the square roots if you know your factors pretty well. If you're pretty weak with your factorization, then I would stick with the factor tree. More to come in another video.